and welcome to the next and latest ITE Soft Insider View that we're going to be, you know, going through. My name is Alan Brown, <coughs> and I'm going to be taking you through this series of events that we're going to be having with this. I'm part of the sales team. I'm a sales consultant with ITE Soft. I've been with the company for about six years now and before that I was doing process automation uh, in a number of other uh, organizations. This series is all going to be about the five things that you need to remember when you are detailing specifically your AP process more than anything else. The first one that we're going to go into on this is actually have you even defined the ownership of the process steps within your AP or P2P process. It's one of the things that I find when I go in to speak with organisations and it's usually a very early stage, very early part of the process that we're, uh, we're doing this with them and it tends to be done as a whiteboarding session more than anything else. But it's asking them about what they've done so far in their process. You know, that they're now out looking and speaking with external organisations like ITE Soft. So, have you actually drawn up your end-to-end -end AP and or P2P process, depending on which one you're doing, might be both, uh, might be just one part of that, because this is all going to link back into, fundamentally, what is your business case? Where is the problem areas? How much of a problem area is that? And therefore, is that getting dealt with as part of the new system that you're going to put in place, the new process you're going to put in place? And are you going to get a return on that investment? Is, and, and part of that is about, are you actually going to be focusing in the right areas for the business to be able to see benefit out of that as well, not just from a financial perspective? So have you drawn up your process? By that, what do I mean by that? Lots of organisations that I go into, they have it in their head. You could talk me through that, fantastic. You could talk me through that at a high level, probably, straight off the bat, <coughs> excuse me, with most of that information there. And in a lot of cases, you, you know, there won't be a lot of depth to it. So really what I'm talking about, have you made it explicit? And also looking within that explicitness of the drawing that you're doing, um, or that I will come in and help you do, or other members of the IT soft sales team can help you do, highlighting specific roles within the AP function, within the finance function, and more importantly, out into the wider part of the business. So that's going to be things, or people like rather, um, the approvers, the good receivers, um, who else you know needs to get involved with this, like procurement, things like that. Because it's very easy to become insular in the process of understanding just what happens within AP and the problems within there. But the problems are usually caused outside of AP and AP are having to manage uh, these sort of processes and workarounds that are being put in place. When you're making this explicit, part of, and this is part of why we do these whiteboarding sessions, to be able to really define in detail and in depth, because it tends to be it's the old phrase of the devil is in the detail. So if you want to make sure you've got the problem sorted out, you need to be in the low level detail. So this also includes as part of that, any of these workarounds. Why have you got the workarounds in place? Is that because you've always done it that way? Or is that because the, the, the business is working in a certain way that is forcing you to have to do certain things the way that you are. And that means that when you are defining part of the ownership of this, is that actually to do with the business uh, or a business unit, or is that to do with the supplier and you know how the supplier is interacting with the business, or is that actually to do with the ownership within, it could be audit for instance, it could be uh, your system accountants things like that where, uh, for instance, for most organisations that I deal with, they have a set of uh, accountants who will do a check before a payment run is done. You know, uh, are these uh, suppliers really going to be paid? Do we need to pay them? Uh, are they being paid on time? Is it for the correct amount, etc, etc. All the sort of usual stuff that would go on. So. How much time and effort is involved in that? Do they actually push more of that work back onto AP to deal with? 
or are they taking responsibility for their own work? So part of this and understanding the ownership aspects of this is actually about accountability. And where does that accountability need to actually sit? Because in a lot of cases, it's not actually with AP. AP's job is about going, we've got the information we need to have to put onto our ERP system so we can pay an invoice to a supplier. That's the, the role of and the function of AP. So it's actually out in the business for them to make the decisions about do we want to prove this or do we want to uh, have a discrepancy with this or do we want to have a credit note with that. This then leads into as part of accountability and you know there's a, a flip to this as well. Is there a policy in place that specifically details what's expected and more importantly has got board level sign off? Or if, if, if not board level sign off, depends on the size of the, size of the organisation, but at least very senior management sign off. Because part of what we're trying to put in place, especially when you're looking at defining your process, and that's fine for how you're currently working, but when you then move to what's a potential future process going to be, if that's not going to be signed off and adhered to by uh, corporate uh, or the board, for instance, then what happens when part of one of the business units goes, well, we're special and we need to operate a slightly different way or a completely different way, for instance, than the way that you want it to run in the future? And how does that potentially impact into your business case? And I see this regularly where, for most organisations, because other outlanding areas of the business are able to not do what is expected as a common practice or best practice or a standard practice within your organisation, well, it causes extra hassle and issues uh, which soaks up time, which soaks up effort, which means AP is perceived as not being as rich and functional as it should be. So part of being able to put a policy in place which is moving up the chain of getting corporate or the board to sign off on something to say we agree to this and by the way that agreement is also to enforce it because essentially we're changing the role of AP from being doers and you're still going to do things but it's now more about police enforcement for lack of a better phrase. You're going to be policing what's happening in the process and enforcing certain standards that you want to have. So that then leads to the other side of this. Have you spoken with people within the process that you, you, you either have defined or you've currently defined that are going to be impacted by this and that could be impacted by some of the changes that you're looking to put in place with automation. And all these points that I'm bringing out, when I go into organisations, they'll have spoken with some of the people. They will definitely have spoken with some of the, the people within AP about what the problems are because they're getting that sort of stuff fed back to them. Managers or the AP managers and uh, financial controllers get this information on a regular basis back from the AP team about uh, uh, you know, where, the, where the problem areas are. And if I was to ask you who are your top three internal business units that give you the most grief. I can almost guarantee that in 90, 95% of the cases, every person I speak with will go, I can give you the top two, ah, there's the top three. Because it's, it tends to be the same people time and time again. So speaking with these people about why you're looking to make some changes, what these changes are and how that can help them as part of that process is a really important aspect of being able to achieve your uh, aims and ambitions of putting automation in place that meets the business case that you're looking for so that fundamentally AP looks good and finance looks good coming out of that at the other end. So this is a really important step because it helps set the playing field for yourselves internally irrespective of vendors of what you're looking at, where you're focusing and why and getting corporate and board to buy into that side of things. So this is you know, really useful for you guys to be able to work through internally even before you know, vendors like ourselves turn up. I'm going to wrap up now as part of this session for the ITE Soft Insider View. I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day 
and uh, I'll see you on the next session. Thank you very much. <laughs>